This screencast will demonstrate the use of Microsoft Excel for data analysis. I'll open up a, an Excel spreadsheet right now. And I'd like to first start by entering in the data. My first column will be for my independent variable. And I'll just resize that column. And my second column will be for the dependent variable. I'll just include that information. Now I'll go ahead and type in the data set. And 2.52 grams. Now that I have all the data typed in, I would like to go ahead and create my graph. So I'm going to select Insert. I'm just going to go ahead and highlight all of my data. And under Charts, I will select XY Scatter without any lines or curves. This will create the graph that I want. Now we'll go ahead and clean up our graph and add other key information. I already have a title entered. However, if I didn't have one, I could put one in. I'm just going to go ahead to Layout, and I would add a chart title if I didn't have one already. Because I already have one inserted, I can just go ahead and click on that and edit it to read whatever title I want. Uh, this particular title would be Mass versus uh, Number of Pennies. I also want to add labels for my X and Y axis. So again, under Layout, I will choose Axis Titles. Primary Horizontal Axis Title will choose that to be below the axis. I can then click into that, delete Axis Title, and put in the appropriate title, Number of Pennies. Now I'll go back to Layout again, and I again want to add a a uh, label for my y-axis this time. So under axis titles, I'll choose primary vertical. I'll do rotated title. I'll click in the box and delete what's present and type in the appropriate information uh, for this particular graph mass. And then, oops, in parentheses, my unit of grams. Please note that the x-axis is for the independent variable in the experiment. The y-axis is for the dependent variable. Next, I'll add a trend line for this data set. I'll return to Layout, and under the option for Trend Line, I'm going to choose a linear trend line. That's going to add the line of best fit for my data set. Now, under Trend Line, I do want to select more trend line options, and I'm going to display the equation on the chart. An optional, here, uh, an optional display is to give the R squared value. That's not required for our classes. However, it is a way of showing uh, how well the data points fit the line of best fit. So we can see that my equation is now being displayed on the chart. I can go ahead and move that to where it's going to be easily read. I can also click in the legend and I can clean this up in any way that I want. I can even remove the whole thing if I desire to do that. I now have a graph that I'm happy with. If I'm writing a scientific paper, I could actually insert this chart, this graph, into a Word document. If I go ahead and right click on this, I can copy my graph. And then if I open Word, I can easily, um, you know, as I'm typing, uh, I can use Control V, just go ahead and paste that graph into my Word document. In addition to this screencast, there's additional information available on the class website in order to help you better use Excel to analyze your laboratory data. Let's go visit the class website. If you click into the search bar and enter Excel, you'll be able to find this page titled Using Microsoft Excel for Data Analysis. In this particular section of the website, uh, you're going to see a reminder of the steps that you should follow in order to create a graph using Microsoft Excel. Uh, there's also discussion of how do we handle uh, an experiment where we have two different data series, for example, a density experiment where we're testing two different metals, metal A and metal B. So hopefully you found this presentation helpful as you're working with Microsoft Excel to help you better analyze the data you're collecting for your labs.